Hello, good day, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of A Bit of Geek TV. My name is Miranda, and I have a great video for you today, complete with my footage from WonderCon, along with my thoughts on the show. Then I'm going to do a review of the game Orcs Must Die, and of the movies John Carter and 21 Jump Street. Finally, I want to make sure that any of my Portland viewers know that the Triforce Tribute is going on in their area until April 21st. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Last weekend, I attended WonderCon for the first time, and I didn't have any expectations. I just knew that there were a couple of panels that I wanted to see. My initial thoughts about the show is that there weren't enough signs. I wandered back and forth, just trying to find where to go for registration. It turns out there was only one sign at the top of one escalator that was blocked by two staff members. So the only sign wasn't even visible. I think at this point, I may just be pampered by the intense organization and signage at PAX. On the other hand, I think that the Anaheim Convention Center was a great space for the con. The building layout was simple, so I didn't experience any panic when trying to figure out where to go next. The expo hall was also much larger than I anticipated, and there was so much to see. I would have benefited from about three more sets of eyeballs, or maybe being eight feet tall. So here's a video that I put together of my weekend at WonderCon. If you've never attended before, then hopefully this gives you an idea of what it's like. So here's the footage I took while I was at WonderCon. Uh, I only filmed on Friday and Saturday because when I was there on Sunday, I ended up walking around and talking to people instead. The camera was there, but it didn't ever get used. Um, so hopefully what I have for Friday and Saturday will suffice. There was a lot of great cosplay. I was really impressed with the dedication. The stuff I see at PAX isn't usually uh, this diverse or even this detailed. So it was really exciting to see what everyone brought. Uh, the expo hall was really great. Um, again, just a monstrous variety. Comic books and artists. And those pumpkins were really cool. I was super pumped to see Geek Chic there. They have amazing tables. I would love to have one for myself someday. I'll talk more about that Spider-Man uh, poster in a couple minutes. Uh, I wanted to buy all the toys, but I didn't. A lot of them were very expensive. There were some stores there that had a lot of like models you could buy and paint that were incredibly impressive. I know some people could go in there and just spend amazing amounts of money. This is the Marvel panel where uh, they talked about all the upcoming issues and story arcs for like Punisher and Amazing Spider-Man. And then these two guys here talked about all of the events that are going to be happening this August to celebrate Spider-Man's 50th anniversary, which is pretty exciting. That's when they talked about Spider-Men, and you saw that poster had two Spider-Men, so we'll see. This here is the Nerdist panel. They were absolutely hysterical, so I'm really excited to see the shows that they put out on their YouTube channel, because just sitting in the audience and listening to them talk was incredibly funny. Here is the Sound of My Voice panel. That's Britt Marling right there talking, and she's just describing to the audience what it's like to play the lead character, Maggie. And uh, I caught the tail end of the Geek and Sundry panel. There's Felicia Day and Will Wheaton. He's talking about his tabletop show that's going to be on Geek and Sundry's new YouTube channel, which will be awesome. He's going to review a bunch of board games, let people know what they should be playing. And then here's where I spent most of my time on Sunday. There's Brittany Lee right there. You can see another video of her demonstrating paper curling techniques on my YouTube channel. Uh, everywhere you looked, it was just amazing comic books, prints, posters, buttons, t-shirts, jewelry, just smiling faces. Um, I spent a lot of time standing at people's booths, just shyly looking around, just admiring their work. I especially liked all the people that were nearby Brittany Lee because they all had the similar sort of watercolor aesthetic to them and uh, it really dovetails nicely with the look that I'm trying to accomplish with the paper sculpting that I'm doing. And so there was just a lot of inspiration to be had. With so many new projects that I'm focusing on, that I will hopefully be revealing soon, I haven't had a lot of time for gaming. A true tragedy. The other day, I had a great gaming session with Skyward Sword, 
But other than that, the only game I've been playing is Orcs Must Die. This is an interesting combination of tower defense and third person shooter. Players control a mage who is tasked with keeping orcs and other mythical riffraff out of sacred blue portals. With each level beaten, you're given new weapons and traps to take down the onslaught of orcs. Items such as spike plates, arrow shafts and walls, fire grates, and spring floors that fling running enemies into boiling lava pits are only a sampling of your total arsenal. The first few levels are fairly straightforward, so the game eases you into a false sense of security before blasting you with intense, complicated rooms that require multiple playthroughs to perfect a winning tactic. The enemies also increase to more than just orcs, including flying bats who breathe fire and slow, strong ogres that take more than the average number of crossbow hits to kill. It's fun, available through Steam, and it's worth a play. If you like tower defense games, strategy titles, or third-person shooters, or all the above, it's definitely up your alley. The graphics are nice, and the main character spews out a bunch of different funny lines as he gleefully murders wave after wave of orcs, weird wolves, and bats. I've been seeing a lot more movies lately, which is awesome, and as such, I'd like to share my thoughts and encourage others to see more movies as well. There's an amazing number of films that are set to come out this year, so we'd best oil our eyeballs in anticipation of all the viewing. I recommend Grapeseed, personally. First, let's talk about John Carter. I was unfamiliar with the story and only knew that some guy was somehow transported to Mars. I ended up enjoying the film, even though the first half of it dragged a bit to me. It was a slow build up to the action and real meat of the story. Although, I'm thinking that if I had read the book, I would have appreciated the details that ended up causing the slowness. I was impressed with the visuals of the Tharks and enjoyed their frequent presence throughout the film. There was comedy strewn throughout, and it was particularly well-placed when Carter tries and fails to adjust to the gravity on Mars. While I believe that the acting left something to be desired, the story was interesting and it was visually pleasing. It's definitely worth seeing, and it's unfortunate that it's, comparatively speaking, doing so poorly at the box office. It's been sitting at 50% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is unfair. It deserves better than that. Moving on to a completely different kind of film, uh, on a whim this week, I went and saw 21 Jump Street. The internet has been buzzing with positive reviews, and I must emphatically agree with all of them. The film is absolutely hysterical and is appropriately faring very well on Rotten Tomatoes, so at least they're doing that much right. The acting is fantastic, and I definitely appreciated the presence of Nick Offerman. Plus, it was really nice to see Channing Tatum in something other than a Nicholas Sparks novel adaptation. The whole time, the film, it makes fun of itself and its roots, but it also takes itself very seriously. The comedy and ridiculousness is just off the charts. It goes straight to the edge and never looks back. There's a fantastic cameo by Johnny Depp, and Jonah Hill and Tatum have amazing on-screen chemistry. I was laughing literally the entire time. It was absolutely worth the too expensive trip to the theater. And lastly, for you all today, I want to share how distressed I am that I am unable to attend the Triforce Tribute Show currently happening in Portland, Oregon until April 21st. A friend sent me the link to the show, and I almost regret having knowledge of it, considering I am unable to attend. From the pictures available on the website, you can see wonderful and unique pieces of art dedicated to the Legend of Zelda. There are paintings, magazines, paper cutouts, costumes, and more. Is anyone out there in Portland? Is anyone going to go? Would anyone like to go for me and tell me how amazing it is? Maybe the show will do really well and they'll do a traveling exhibit and then I can see it for myself, which would be awesome. And in other news, no, wait, that's all I have for you. Oh, right, the Double Fine Kickstarter closed its uh, funds at $3 million, so three cheers for them. I can't wait to get my game and know that I was part of this whole exciting endeavor. And with that, the episode's over. So thanks for watching A Bit of Geek TV.